Hello Tubes. So Tommy Shelby is Caldwell Titcombe Professor in the Department of African and African American Studies at Harvard and a member of the Department of Philosophy. Broadly speaking, Shelby is in the analytic and liberal egalitarian traditions. In his forthcoming book, Dark Ghettos, for example, he argues that the urban poor, whatever their identities, are individual moral agents and thereby obliged to heed universal moral principles, regardless of structural injustices. Safe to say, liberal individualism of this sort, coming from a black man, isn't universally welcome amongst radicals, some of whom seem to take it, and indeed him, personally. On the 17th of September, Professor Shelby delivered a keynote address at the 2016 Conference of the Society of Analytical Feminism. It was titled Injustice, Reproduction and the Ghetto Poor. Shelby discussed reproductive rights and responsibilities in deprived communities. What happened next, I'm informed by an attendee, was that during the Q&A, a graduate student angrily delivered a long and rhetorical question to the effect that Shelby, as a classical liberal and a man, open brackets of dubious blackness, close brackets, was not fit to give the address, especially given his failure to acknowledge, quote, black feminist literature. The aggressive and insulting tone of her question first led to its being ignored by Shelby, there was then some pressure from quarters who may not have been culturally sensitive to the implicit racial shaming for Shelby to address its substance. Shelby, who was most palpably aware of the implicit slur against his ethnic authenticity, then claimed, churlishly perhaps not to remember the question, which was on request repeated by the grad student, amounting to why on a talk on black women and black women's bodies, black feminist theorists were not being engaged. Shelby, still visibly upset, dismissed this as asking after a bibliography, that is, demanding that certain texts and authors be name-checked as shibboleths, even though he regarded their arguments as superfluous to the substance of his own. In the resulting fracas, with others now piling in on both sides, and with order breaking down, it was suggested in responding to a barbed question as to what Shelby was trying to do, that he was, quote, just trying to do philosophy, unquote. It was this remark which led the Society of Analytical Feminism to later issue an apology to the triggered grad student, the implicit insult being that Shelby's detractors were not doing philosophy, at least not properly. Standing alone, this apology also, of course, serves as a rebuke against Professor Shelby. Firstly, the insulting implication was correct. Throwing a tantrum, insinuating against the ethnic authenticity of the speaker, rather than explicating on the merits of his argument, and then attempting to justify this by claiming you're channeling the fire words of your foremothers, is not doing philosophy. Indeed, it's being what the internet would quickly, if messily, identify as a social justice warrior. The Society of Analytical Feminism does not, alas, share the internet's hard-won wisdom when it comes to dealing with these special Pokemon. Hence, it's having done completely the wrong thing. The prime directive on SJW management is this, and this alone. Never, ever apologise. Do not, under any circumstance, show contrition in the face of their accusatory onslaught. In everyday civic discourse, displays of shame serve to rehabilitate damaged trust. Ceteris paribus, visible bad conscience, is an effective restorative, whilst also, when genuine, yielding sublime resonances of sympathy, critical self-reflection and trust, which can make human relationships a joy. The SJW, however, is not pursuing a trust relationship. Like abusers and cultists in general, their intent is control. Specifically, thoroughgoing puppetry of your guilt-ridden soul. 
In apologising to the triggered postgraduate rather than the genuinely affronted professor, the Society of Analytic Feminism has thereby subjugated itself to the very domestic abuse that its members frequently analyse and caution against. Also, looking at this year's programme, I can't but notice that the conference was a bit light on, well, analytic content, and completely devoid of anything even remotely empirical. Now, it's a bit of an in-joke that feminist philosophy conferences are essentially choir practice for the faithful, or resonance sessions, to use Professor Weinberg's coinage. But it's a bit of a shame that a society established so that feminist issues could be discussed within an analytic framework now only differ from the run of the mill in having some analytic content as opposed to none whatsoever. Much more a shame that those who rudely shouted down some of what little such content there was are now being treated as if they're the wronged party rather than the insulted and then unjustly rebuked speaker, suggesting the Society of Analytic Feminism, as currently constituted, might have outlived its usefulness. Thank you for listening.